Medications that might impair neuromuscular transmission. Myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune disorder characterized by fluctuating muscle weakness and fatigue due to impaired neuromuscular transmission. Certain medications can exacerbate or induce a myasthenic crisis by further impairing neuromuscular junction function. Healthcare professionals must be aware of these medications and exercise appropriate caution when prescribing them to patients with myasthenia gravis. Macrolide antibiotics. Macrolides like azithromycin, clarithromycin, and erythromycin should be avoided if possible in myasthenia gravis patients. These antibiotics can cause a rapid onset of weakness, often within one hour of exposure, by inhibiting the release of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. Fluoroquinolones. Fluoroquinolone antibiotics such as levofloxacin, moxifloxacin, and ciprofloxacin are best avoided in myasthenia gravis patients. The FDA has issued a boxed warning due to their similarity to quinine compounds that directly affect the acetylcholine receptor channel, potentially aggravating myasthenic symptoms. Aminoglycosides Aminoglycosides like gentamicin, tobramycin, and amikacin should be avoided if possible in myasthenia gravis, especially in cases of critical illness, high dosing, or renal failure, as they pose a higher risk of exacerbating muscle weakness. Intravenous magnesium Intravenous magnesium should be avoided if possible in myasthenia gravis patients, as it decreases the sensitivity of the postsynaptic membrane to acetylcholine. If supplementation is necessary, oral administration is preferred to minimize the risk of a myasthenic crisis. Beta blockers while beta blockers like metaprolol and labetalol can be used cautiously if the benefits outweigh the risks, they have been associated with respiratory failure in myasthenia gravis patients, particularly those with other contributing factors. Close monitoring and use of the lowest effective dose are recommended. Calcium channel blockers Calcium channel blockers such as diltiazem and clavidipine may be used cautiously in myasthenia gravis if the benefits exceed the risks. However, they have also been associated with respiratory failure, even in patients without prior respiratory symptoms. Antiarrhythmics Class 1A antiarrhythmic agents like quinidine, disopyramide, and procainamide should be used with caution in myasthenia gravis patients, as they inhibit acetylcholine release at the neuromuscular junction and can lead to respiratory failure. Corticosteroids while corticosteroids like dexamethasone and prednisone are a standard treatment for myasthenia gravis, they may cause a transient worsening of symptoms in the first two weeks of treatment at high doses. Close monitoring is recommended during this period. Neuromuscular blocking agents Myasthenia gravis patients are more sensitive to non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents like rocuronium and vecuronium while showing increased resistance to depolarizing agents like succinylcholine. Succinylcholine is generally avoided due to its unpredictability, and dosing for non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents should be reduced by 50%. In summary, healthcare professionals must exercise vigilance when prescribing medications to patients with myasthenia gravis, as certain classes of drugs can impair neuromuscular transmission and potentially precipitate a myasthenic crisis. By adhering to the recommendations outlined above and carefully weighing the risks and benefits, adverse outcomes can be mitigated for this vulnerable patient population. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.